Hi, kids. Today, we will learn important processes involved in water cycle. So let's start. There is water on Earth everywhere. In the air, on the ground, on hills, under the ground too. But this water always keeps on moving and changes its states. That is, liquid keeps on changing into water vapors, to ice, and ice again to water. And that movement of water along with changing states of water is called water cycle. Before we actually learn what is water cycle, we will learn about the important process involved in water cycle. First is evaporation. When sun heats up the water in water bodies, it changes into water vapors and move up to the sky. When plants respire or breathe, they release water vapor in the air. This is called transpiration. Both the processes convert water into water vapors. Water vapor in the air gets cooled down, then changes back to liquid form. This is called condensation. Here is a very good example of condensation. A cold glass of water with tiny droplets of water outside it. These droplets of water are not leaked from the glass. So then, where did they come from? The cold, the cold water inside the glass cools down the air around the glass too. So the water vapors in that air too cools down. And when water vapors are cooled down, they again form water. And it's called condensation. So, these droplets around the cold glass of water is a result of condensation. Precipitation. Precipitation is a process where water falls from the clouds. It can be a rainfall, snowfall, or hailstorm. Precipitation occurs when water vapors in the clouds condenses into water and the clouds get too heavy to hold it anymore and condensed water falls on earth in the form of rain, hail, sleet, or snow. Through precipitation, water falls back on earth and gets stored in water bodies. And also, some of the water is soaked by plants. Some is soaked by land. Some of the water gets stored as underground water in aquifers. And this is called collection of water. And the process of soaking water by the ground is called infiltration. Surface runoff. When water in ice caps melts, it flows down the hills in the form of streams and rivers. It is called surface runoff. Now we know all the parts of water cycles. We will learn what is a water cycle in detail in our next assignment. Now let's see what is the meaning of the term fresh water. We all need water for many uses. And there are many types of sources of water. We need fresh water to drink. And most of the Earth's water is salt water. That is, we can't drink it. So... There are a number of sources of water on Earth, but we need only fresh water. And fresh water is naturally occurring water on Earth's surface in ice sheets, ice caps, glaciers, icebergs, bogs, 
ponds, lakes, rivers, and streams, and even underground as groundwater. The term sweet water is used to describe fresh water, in contrast to salt water, which is present in seas and oceans. Kids, only 2.5% of the total water present on the earth is fresh water. And most of it is in glaciers and ice caps. So our fresh water is very limited. And we should take all the possible steps to use fresh water smartly. That is, we should not waste water. Kids, even the fresh water is required to be filtered and treated before we drink it. In our homes, water comes from a public water system. For example, in Toronto, water is moved from Lake Ontario, a natural freshwater source, to a human-made water treatment plant where it is filtered, cleaned, and treated so that it is absolutely safe to drink. And then it is moved to homes, businesses through water supply systems of pipes and pumps. So kids, today we learned important processes involved in water cycle and also what is fresh water and why we should use fresh water smartly. Now you may go ahead and take a quiz to learn more. Bye-bye. Tootway has thousands of animated videos on math, English, and science to clear the core basics of these subjects.